New year, same me, same goals as the year before. I'm gonna try to implement them. Today I'm going to work on some meal prep, healthy meal prepping. So I do have a list of meals that I wanna make today. All great, high protein, low carb. It's gonna be fantastic. You know what's gonna help me out? Thrive Market. They're all about healthy living and making it easy and affordable for everyone. This is actually my recent package. I just got it in the mail. I'm out of breath, it's so heavy. Huge thanks to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Thank you for supporting me when I have sponsored content. I have been a member of Thrive Market for quite some time. It is a membership-based online grocery store. They sell so much more than groceries. They have cleaning products that I love, like these Blue Land products. These are dishwasher tablets. I love stocking up on all of my cleaning products from Thrive Market because I know the brands that they sell on there are eco-friendly, they're clean, they're sustainable brands, and that's what they're all about. I love getting my kids snacks, kids and adult, just snacks in general. I feel like they're more healthier, again, from sustainable brands. They have organic, non-GMO stuff, and a lot of their snacks. They do the legwork for me. I'm not always great at looking at ingredient lists, but they do all the work, okay? If you're looking for a snack that's healthier for you, Thrive Market is the way to go. So you know, everything you get from there is going to be high quality. Granola bars, these are for my kiddos. I love liquid IV stocking up, and I grabbed some Element. I realized I was out of these, and I love Element. These are sugar-free. Did I get the sugar-free liquid IV? I did! I'm all, I'm all about living that sugar-free life. And if you're all about a certain lifestyle or diet choice like keto, paleo, gluten-free, oh, they have a lot of gluten-free products. It's really easy to navigate their website and to click around for whatever you're looking for. The other day, I had a donut for breakfast. <laughs> The holidays are over, but I can't seem to kick the sugar. Someone brought it for me. What am I gonna say, no to a donut? Anyway, I ate it, had like an allergy attack. Like what, I guess my body is ready for the new year before I am. Let me have my sour cream donut, will ya? Anyway, my body was like, absolutely not, N-O. So I went to Thrive Market immediately and got some gluten-free pancake mix. This is our favorite from King Arthur. They have a ton of healthy swaps on there too. So if you're like, man, I really love sugar and I really love my gummy bears, well, guess Guess what, Thrive Market has like better for you gummy bears. This is the Lily's brand, so great. And then Nutella, can't give it up. My kids love it so much. Who can blame them? Nutella has 22 grams of sugar per serving and this is very similar. Been buying this for years. It's Justin's hazelnut spread and it has eight grams of sugar per serving. Huge difference and that's what Thrive Market is all about. Like salt and vinegar chips? Thrive Market has you covered, but with a better brand, better ingredients. It's just better. Check this one out, trying to cut some sugar from your diet come the new year. Easy swaps. They've got easy swaps on Thrive Market. They have this Unreal brand. These are like Reese's peanut butter cups, just peanut butter cups, Unreal peanut butter cups. You know what's unreal about them? The fact that they have five grams of sugar and Reese's peanut butter cups has like 23 grams of sugar. <laughs> so much better. They taste phenomenal. So it is membership based. They have two kinds of memberships, monthly membership and yearly membership. The yearly breaks down to about $5 a month. They have so many ways to save money on their website. They have deals all of the time. They have freebies. What was mine? Even their members get freebies often. I got under eye hydro gels. Thank you so much. They have an option for Thrive Cash on some products. There'll be like a little link where it says Thrive Cash and you can earn cash back on some of the products that you purchase. Moreover, they do a price matching. So if you find the price is better elsewhere, they'll match it for you. It's a win-win. And if you sign up for the yearly membership, it's $60 a year. And if you don't make that in savings, they will credit you the difference. You're not gonna lose anything. And I will throw up on the screen what I saved in just this order alone. It's mind boggling it's crazy. I definitely save more than my membership. I tell people about Thrive Market all of the time because it's that fantastic. Their selection is so much bigger than anywhere in my local grocery store. It's convenient, they ship right to my front door. I don't have to leave the house, I can scroll my phone when I'm holding my baby and he's sleeping and just go grocery shopping and it's fantastic. I, cleaning products you guys love, they have clean beauty products, household products, paper products, pantry products, stock up on all your stuff because right now Thrive Market is offering you 30% off of your first order. Take advantage of that screaming deal. Where else are you gonna find that? 
nowhere, just right here. Use my link in the description box below, thrivemarket.com slash the wads. You'll get 30% off of your first order and a free gift up to a $60 value. And they have free shipping over $49 gets you free shipping, and I clearly meet that threshold every time. So pumped about the things that I got. I really encourage you guys to check them out. My link is in the description box below. Scream and deal for you. First things first, I think I'm gonna put together some high protein, low carb breakfast for me. That's a really hard meal for me to get started my day with. Breakfast is always a tricky time for me. I just feel like I'm barely awake, don't really know what I'm doing. Taking care of everyone else, getting everyone else up and ready and up and at them and all that good stuff. So by the time it's time for me to eat something, I'm just eating leftover brownies from Brownie Friday. And I'm trying to break that cycle. So I figured what really helped me postpartum was when I put together breakfast boxes. So I'm gonna try to do that. I found a really cool recipe for high protein scrambled eggs and it just calls for a crazy ingredient cottage cheese. So I'm gonna try it out, see if it's crazy, cause you know, sometimes things be crazy. Jordan. The recipe calls for four eggs to half a cup of cottage cheese. I feel like that is one serving, so I'm gonna double that. And if they're gross, I'll just choke them down. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Oh, I got you. Are you okay? I guess technically it doesn't really matter what you're eating or when you're eating breakfast. It's just when you're breaking your fast from the night. So I'm gonna do like one cup of cottage cheese. Oh, you know what I'm missing? The classic. Just a little bit of salt and pepper in here. Gotta give it a little flavor and you know what would be great? Adding some chives. I like doing that. Fresh herbs always elevate a dish and you'll see in a minute to my pancakes what I'm going to add. It's gonna blow your mind. I made it the other day and I was like, why have I not been doing this my entire life? A little hack for you, if you want really nice and fluffy eggs, some people put these in the blender with the cottage cheese to really get it up there. I think the whisk is doing a good job. But if you want to add something to make them really fluffy, heavy whipping cream or some half and half, just a little bit. You don't need that much, a couple of tablespoons. A little splash will do ya. All right, that should be good. Now for the pancakes, I bought this Birch Benders Keto Blend. I used to talk so much crap about these pancakes. But listen, for zero added sugar, six grams of protein and six carb, how much crap can you really talk? I do add some eggs to this just for a little extra protein. I've got some milk that expired. This is just like an estimated date, right? I don't know about that. I had buttermilk in here too. You can use water. I'm just gonna use almond milk. I don't really measure anything. I just, listen, I've made pancakes so many times in my life. Here's the kicker if you want to elevate it. Grab yourself an orange or a lemon even. Woo! I don't eat my pancakes with sh um, syrup. I feel like even if you did, this would make it better. Oh, there's a sticker. <laughs> this just gives it such a nice freshness. Where is my other one? This one sucks. There it is. Yeah, now we're moving along. Just grab the zest off of it. Stop at the white part. That part is a little bitter. All those essential oils. Ooh, can I make lime pancakes? I love limes. The flavor isn't overpowering. And what I love the most about citrus is that it does introduce a punch full of flavor with hardly any calories or sugar, anything else. I'll have you know, I saw a whisk the other day. It was like a mini whisk. I didn't buy it. I wanted to. Anybody. Maybe next time. Everyone has their thing, right? It's gluten free, so can you overmix these? I don't think so. It doesn't matter. And then I'm just gonna throw some of these on a skillet to warm them up. These are really great. They're chicken sausages. They're fully cooked, so I'm just gonna warm them up. But this has nine grams of protein, zero carbs. So it's just a great option to fill your bellies so you're not hungry in like an hour, you know? That's my problem. I'm a big snacker. I'm not sure if you saw the texture of these eggs, but they're nice and light and fluffy. I can't see any of the cottage cheese in here. It's all really nicely incorporated. No hunky chunks. I'm not even a huge fan of cottage cheese. Oh, the hunky chunks are all at the bottom. That's okay, I'll add them anyway. A Little bit of butter in there, and then I'm going to butter my massive griddle. I love this griddle more than, ooh, <laughs> everything else in my life. 
It's so large, I can cook so many pancakes at one time, and when you are having a lot of mouths to feed, it is important. Like, who wants to sit over a stove for 30 minutes in the morning? I'm gonna tell you a little story about a girl named Lucky. No, I'm just kidding. So, pancakes for breakfast. You might think, oh, that's not healthy, but these are. They're keto-friendly. Isn't that amazing? You can still eat the breakfasts and the meals that you love just by making small changes to them and making them slightly healthier. So these, I forgot what I said, maybe like six grams of carbs or whatever, but normal pancakes are like 25-ish. I say that with a question mark. Maybe sometimes more. Um, I am still loving making the sourdough pancakes too. So I won't always eat high protein because I can't give up cake or brownies. Oh, by the way, I made the best brownies the other day. But Macro Friendly Foods, the subscription service that I'm subscribed to and have been for years, um, she has recipes for, like you know, high protein. So I'm going to have to try some of those out. She has a ton of different desserts and just general recipes, like 800, over 800 of them. I do have a link always in the description box, and my code is the wads if you want 10%. It smells so great. The sausage is high in protein. The pancakes are high in protein. The eggs, the cottage cheese has 14 grams of protein per serving. So it's just great all around and Wentworth is already digging into the pancakes. So I'm gonna let these cool and then seal them up and breakfast is good to go for the next couple of days. Next thing I'm gonna throw together are some steak kebabs. I made these ones before. Simple ingredients, pretty quick and easy to throw together. I'm gonna skewer them on a kebab. So, I mean, that part is a little time consuming. And there is a sauce that you could make. I I didn't make the sauce last time. I feel like it's unnecessary. Blank steak is really pricey, <laughs> but if you go to Costco, you can find it pretty affordable. Oh, look at this lovely chunk of meat. Full of protein. You know, there's like 70 grams of protein in eight ounces. How many ounces is this? Two and a half pounds. I could probably eat eight ounces of this. Clarice. I'm gonna stop making you nervous. I'm just gonna cut this up and I'm pretty sure you're supposed to go against the grain. So the grain is this way. So I'm gonna cut it this way. Pretty hunky chunk pieces. I've made this once before and I've been dreaming about it ever since. It was two years ago. Obviously flank steak is crazy expensive. So that's one reason why I don't make it often. The other reason is because I try to share new recipes with you, but I feel like it was two years ago. You might not remember. Even though this is less of a recipe and more of a technique. She's beauty and she's grace. She's Miss United States. If this doesn't say America, I don't know what does. So I cubed that up and I'm gonna do the same to some green peppers and onions. This is actually a Philly cheesesteak recipe but I don't make the Velveeta sauce that's there on the website. I just don't think it's necessary. And I'm going to keep these bell pepper chunks really hunky. I might need a second one. And then same with the onion. Oh my word, I love this. Fresh ingredients are just so fantastic. Mushrooms as well. Are these pre-washed? I'm gonna have to rinse these. I'm not going to cut them. Last time I cut them, they kept falling off the skewer when I was grilling them, and it just became a big old mess, so my skewers are pretty thick. So I got the really small baby ones, and I'm just gonna skewer them as is. I'm just gonna start skewering them. I do have a pretty large pan, like 15 inches by however long, and my skewers fit in here, so I feel like, well, the smaller ones do. I, and I feel like this is a great make ahead where I can make this stored in my fridge or even my freezer and then cook it in a couple of days. Because you know, the days can get very hectic and if you don't have dinner planned, then it's like out to eat and all your resolutions are out the window. By the way, in the last voiceover, I completely forgot to mention the schmutz on my sweater. <laughs> it's yogurt baby hands. I was holding Wolfgang and he just got it everywhere. And I thought it was just on my shoulder up here. I didn't think to, I mean, I guess that's a really hard place to look to see if there's any yogurt. Thanks for no one for letting me know I had yogurt all over my sweater. Anyway, uh, skewing these kebabs, they're so fantastic. You can do this with chicken or whatever protein that you like. I actually have a really good fish recipe um, that I want to make soon. Is, are, is salmon high in protein? I know it's supposed to be like healthier with the omegas and all that good stuff. I take good quality vitamins, so I'm not too worried about that. And um, I cook with a lot of olive oil. So anyway, maybe I'll share that in a future meal prep video. If you enjoyed this one, I'll definitely make another one because it helps me 
And I love cooking and I love making new recipes and I love to eat. Most importantly, love to eat. And these kebabs were fantastic. We had them last night for dinner and oh my gosh, everyone gobbled them up. Everyone. They look so great, but there's even more that's gonna make them better. But still very simple. So you just drizzle oil over everything. And then I have this Kinder's, the steak blend seasoning. Um, I bet the butter, what is it? Buttery Steakhouse or something like that would be fantastic on this too, but that's literally it. You just sprinkle it on top of everything. And then when you're ready to cook them, plop them on the grill. Here's what they looked like. Alex is always the grill master. I may have said earlier when I was grilling, the mushrooms fell off, but really it was when he was grilling. Last time we had these was at the beach house. We go once a year. It's like a one week kind of thing. And everything always tastes better there, but happy to report it tasted just as good in the comfort of my own home. The next thing I'm gonna throw together, I call it keto anti-pasta salad. So I guess low carb, high protein, is keto if you want to look at it that way. I just look at it as eating more protein and less carbs. <laughs> Why label it, right? So this is one of my favorite salads, if you will. It doesn't include any lettuce, although you totally could. Does lettuce have carbs? Does butter have carbs? I don't really care. I don't really care because I love lettuce, but this just includes some vegetables, some meat, and a dressing that is to die for. I think if you make this, whether it's for yourself, for meal prepping, for a get together, everyone's gonna love it. It calls for tomatoes, that's not my vibe. So I just double up on the red pepper and I chop in like hunky chunky pieces and I'm just gonna throw everything straight into a bowl. It's really simple. Starting out with two red peppers, just chunking them up. And then I'm going to add in some red onion. I'm gonna chunk this up. Question mark? Not really sure how I normally do the red onion. A little smaller pieces because, man, this thing packs a punch. So I'm probably going to do, I don't know, what's this? A cup, half cup? A hefty amount. I also have this fancy mozzarella cheese. Sometimes I buy the, the snack and cheese. Ah, spitting! Which is still mozzarella cheese, but they're like in balls. And I have some of those, but I also have this left over. I made some pesto sandwiches. I figured I would just use this up. And then I've made this before without any cheese. So the slices are kind of thin. So I'm just gonna probably quarter it. No, uh, that was too big. So I'm gonna cut the quarters in half. I don't really know how much of this, like, you know, however much you want. It's very similar to like an Italian chopped salad that I used to make with beans in it and it did have lettuce chickpeas i guess is that a bean or a pea and then this recipe calls for salami and pepperoni so i go to the deli and i get it thice sliced pretty thick and then i just cube this up i find that this is just the best way to do it and then throw that in same with the salami slices i just cube this up too high protein High sodium. <laughs> Tossing that right in. It just reminds me of going to my aunt's house. She always had an antipasta tray out and I've never made one like she did. She had like rolls, like she would sit there and I assume just roll all of the meats and then douse it in some kind of oil mixture, vinegar, oil, and herbs. So this is what we're working with. Oh, but that's not it. One of my all time favorite sleepover snacks. I'm salivating already, the banana pepper is down here. It's like we're having a sleepover and our parents are sleeping, except for instead of parents are sleeping, our kids are sleeping and we're sneaking up eating banana peppers. That's my favorite snack. What are you sneaking up to eat? This keto antipasta salad? <laughs> Consolidated my fridge, so I just threw pepperoncinis in with them, which is basically banana peppers, so I'm just gonna dice those up and throw those in too. Did I get ya? She's juicy. All right, that's enough. So now I'm gonna throw together the dressing that goes on top of this. Ooh, it's what really makes it. So three tablespoons of oil, half a cup of red wine vinegar. We need a little bit more. This is makes it so good. A little bit of basil, but I always add Italian seasoning because I always have it in my pantry and it's like more. I mean oregano, did I say basil? Because I am going to add fresh basil. This is straight from my garden. So I'm gonna take a few leaves. Oh my gosh, basil is superior 
to parsley. When's the last time you had fresh parsley? If it's been a while, just head outside and take some grass clippings and that's what you're missing. Basil is just oh, so fragrant and fresh, kind of licorice-y, but not as much as, what's that other herb that's like licorice? I can't think of it right now, but I made a pasta salad with it. Uh, couple years ago and oh my gosh, I, I can't stop thinking about that, but not in a good way. This is great and about a half a cup of this, throw that in. It's one way to elevate a dish, fresh herbs, fresh citrus, I'm telling you. And then six tablespoons of Swerve confectioner sugar. So this is like a sugar replacement, but it tastes basically the same. There is a slight like, hmm, weird aftertaste but not if you don't, not if you're not looking for it, you know? I think I'm gonna go shy on this and just do five. I think that's good enough. I'm not even really sure it needs the sweetness. I mean, maybe with all that saltiness, right? You need some acid, you need some sweet, you need some salty. You gotta hit every layer of the tongue. And that's it. Ooh, I'm salivating. Just dump this all over. My lunch is served. <laughs> Obviously give it a toss, but it's just so pretty. Does anyone love food this much? I'm gonna give it a toss. If I had a lid to this, I would just throw a lid on it and give it a good shake, but I don't. You can add whatever the heck you want to this too, and I think it'll be fantastic. First time I had this, my sister-in-law made it, and I was like, yes, 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 and also thank you. All right, that looks a little better, yeah? I'm gonna take a little taste test of this. Oh my God. When I die, I wanna be buried with this. I actually don't wanna be buried at all. When I die, serve this at my funeral. Thank you. One of my all time favorite foods. Of all time. This. <laughs> it's so good. Mmm. 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 How do we rewrite the star? Nothing could keep us apart. All right, that's enough. One more bite, though. All right, two more bites. Moving on. Moving on to a sweet treat. These are so good. I made them for Thanksgiving. Crowd pleaser. They're protein buckeyes. You might be thinking, how much protein can you put in a buckeye? Six grams in one little buckeye. Thanks to some protein powder. So four ingredients. Five, because you're gonna dip them in chocolate. Six, if you wanna put coconut oil. Let's not get all wrangled up with the numbers. What am I looking for? I'm gonna use my KitchenAid, because why not? Why not? Why not? Take a crazy chance. <laughs> get this party started right now. Really simple recipe. And when you're eating these, you listen, we all want a sweet treat at the end of the day, maybe morning time, maybe midday, whatever the heck kind of day you're having. I don't think it matters what kind of day I'm having. I don't think I'm ever going to turn down a Buckeye. So why not make them healthy? I'm starting out with two cups of peanut butter. Sometimes I use my kitchen scale because measuring peanut butter, so annoying. Normally, I just eyeball it, you know me. So two cups of peanut butter going in. I've seen so many variations of peanut butter balls. Have you ever tried them with like Rice Krispie cereal, essentially? Like puffed rice cereal on the inside? I had so many Buckeyes this holiday season. I think it literally gave me a cavity. <laughs> A couple teaspoons of vanilla extract, four tablespoons of honey. I'm sure you can use agave here or even maple syrup. By the way, this nifty measuring spoon is from the Pamper Chef. I've had them for years and I love them. Now here's the fun part. Instead of where you would typically add powdered sugar, I'm going to add ye old protein powder. I lost my scoop, so I'm just gonna weigh it out. Everyone has their preference on like what kind of protein powder they like the most. I just got this because it was on sale at Costco. However, I recently got this one and a lot of people rave about this. It's a little pricier. So 128 grams of protein powder. 132 is close enough for me. I'm gonna throw that in and then whip it up. This smells so good. So now that it's all mixed together, like it's a really great consistency. I'm going to roll these into balls. Man, these are so good. They're almost too good that you think, hmm. So 
I love having treats like this on hand. It just saves me from raiding my pantry and making some unhealthy choices. Even though this is a treat, I feel like it's a healthy treat. So it's good. I'm not at the level where I just eat whole foods all the time. I have been there before. Maybe I'll get back to that. Probably not though, because I do enjoy my life and I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy eating treats. I'm just not willing to do it. I don't really care that much about it. I do like having treats that are a little healthier for me and they make me feel a little better. I'm gonna throw these in the fridge and let them firm up for like, for like 30 minutes and then I'll dip them into chocolate. Pretty oh. simple. A little bit of chocolate, never hurt anybody. I melted up. Um, okay, so I had these Lily semi-sweet style baking chips. Uh, and then I had the Ghirardelli melted chocolates in the back there. <laughs> the Lily's brand, I think, is zero sugar or something like that. I'm sure they add some kind of like chemical to it. I don't know what they do, okay? It tastes great. But sometimes when you change too many ingredients in a recipe to make them healthier, it just, that's when it doesn't taste good, you know? But this, changing the powdered sugar to the protein powder, delicious. So I didn't want to change too much, so I did it with the normal chocolate. And it tasted amazing. These are a crowd pleaser for sure. Kid pleaser too. All right, another recipe. This one is honey sriracha ground chicken and broccoli, right? Sounds amazing, sounds delicious. So many flavors I'm all about. The first ingredient is obviously chicken and it calls for ground chicken. Um, have you seen the price of ground chicken at your grocery store? Insane. You're first born, essentially. So what I like to do is ground my own dang chicken. Did you know that you can do that? <laughs> right in your very own food processor. If you don't have a food processor, just cut it up real small. I think that'll be just fine. So chicken breasts are probably ideal for this, especially if you're wanting to keep the fat low. But I have chicken thighs because that's how I live my life. I just think they're so much juicier, hard to overcook, and I'm just gonna grind it up. Why don't they make why don't they make the cords longer? Oh, when a problem comes along, you must whip it. And just like that, you have some ground chicken. I'm gonna throw a little bit of oil in a pot on my stove top and start cooking this chicken up while I cut up the broccoli. Talking about she's beauty and she's great. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. So while this is cooking, I'm gonna work on the broccoli. It calls for 12 ounces, and I'm just gonna rinse this really quick. And then I'm gonna cut it into bite-sized pieces. I just take it off of the stalk like this, and that's pretty much all I do. Keeping it nice and easy. That doesn't seem like enough to me, so I'm gonna do more. I have one more head. Thankfully, my kids love broccoli, and I could always use more vegetables in my diet. I'm gonna chop up any of the bigger pieces. The great thing about this is that it cooks up really fast, so it could be a really great weeknight meal too, but also great to make ahead. Who is here? BRB. It's a revolving front door, I tell you. All right, this cooks up in a jiffer. And once the chicken is done cooking, I'm just going to reserve it into a dish over here. And I'm going to add a little bit more oil and throw in the broccoli and let this cook. It should only take about eh, five minutes, but I am gonna season these two because you season every layer, a little bit of salt and pepper, nothing crazy yet. I think a little hack that I typically use is use a little bit less oil or none at all and then do a little splash of water like that. And then they'll cook in no time. I like to cover mine. So while that's cooking, I'm gonna throw the sauce together. I've made this once before and it was really good. It calls for a quarter cup of sweet chili sauce. My kids love this stuff. They'll dump it just on rice which is a really low carb friendly, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But this particular kind is sugar free. So, ooh, two carbs per serving, great. And it's gluten free if you were interested. So how much do I need? A quarter cup of this or so. This is packed full of flavor. And then I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of honey. Here's the kicker if you wanna add this, some sriracha sauce. I just ran out of mine, so I had to buy a new one. Two to three tablespoons, ooh, two to three tablespoons of this. It really packs a punch. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. I like to use cocoa aminos. Calls for sesame oil. I could have sworn on my life that I had some. Turns out I don't. I'm going to add a little bit of ginger paste and a little bit of garlic fresh from my garden. And then give this a misc. Misc? 
And that is the sauce. Oh, yes. Sometimes I like to double the sauce because it's always nice to have extra sauce. Especially my husband, he loves to have extra sauce. The broccoli is done, so I'm gonna take this out. You're actually supposed to cook it first so you don't have to do all this mixing and rearranging. Um, I'm gonna throw the chicken back in and then dump the sauce on top. You're supposed to let it cook until the sauce gets a little thicker. Um, I'm pretty sure we can double this sauce situation, but here we are. And then when it's all thickened up, you throw the broccoli back in and that's it. You can store it in food containers, eat it throughout the week, or I am just gonna put it in a large container and when I need dinner one night, I'm gonna pull it out. <laughs> Or I'm sure you can even throw this in the freezer. They have freezer meals that look just like this. So quick and easy and delicious and healthy. I just took a taste test. Oh my, the, all the flavors are happening in my mouth right now. I know healthy is a subjective term, but I don't care what you, like this is better than taking, getting takeout, better than running to your local Chinese restaurant. There's one reason, Alex is always up for Chinese. Ooh, now I'm really feeling that heat. I'm a wimp though, it's not that spicy. Alex always wants to go out to eat and I'm like, I can make it better at home and my belly won't feel like garbage afterward. You know what I mean? 20 minutes is what this took, that's it. All right, I'm gonna throw together, you guessed it, <laughs> let's say it together. Based off all of the hints that I've given you thus far, spinach artichoke dip, hey. You see the spinach, you see the artichoke, and you see the dip. Really simple ingredients. Again, I had most of these on hand, except for the spinach and sour cream. It does call for a little bit of sour cream. But it calls for yogurt, bumps up the protein there. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. Football is on. And you know, you can't watch football without, what is this? I never buy it like this. <laughs> is this eight ounces? So eight ounces of cream cheese, plop that in. A quarter cup of sour cream, plop that in. A quarter cup of Greek yogurt, plopping that in. A little bit of garlic. Two thirds cup of Parmesan. I've had this in the fridge for a while. Still good. All right, three, how much is that? That's good, and then I have some powdered stuff. I don't really like that, but I'll throw some of that in. And then one third cup of mozzarella cheese. You know, I love this already. I love spinach artichoke dip, especially, that's right, when I'm watching football. You wanna guess that? <laughs> Eleanor said, no one guessed that. All right, and then for the kicker, because, um, you know, there's a misconception around spinach artichoke dip that it's healthy because it has spinach and artichokes, but that myth has been busted. So I have, what is this? 12 ounces of marinated artichoke hearts. These are great. <laughs> oh, my fingers are weak. Ooh, there it is. So I'm just gonna take all the artichokes out and then I'm just gonna give these a chop because I don't want artichoke hanging out of my mouth while I'm eating my spinach artichoke dip while I'm, you guessed it, watching football. My sister-in-law made spinach artichoke dip in the crock pot. Last time she came, what was it, Christmas? Oh my gosh, it was so good. I've been craving it ever since. Ooh, I'm gonna cut them up really small. I don't even wanna know that there's artichokes in here, okay? Why is it slimy? They're slimy and slippery. I keep sliding all around, this is dangerous. I'm gonna mix this up before I add anything else. This smells like Little Caesars. I can't tell you the last time I walked into a Little Caesars, but this is it. And I'm gonna add all of the artichokes in. And then I have 10 ounces of organic spinach. So this is still frozen. I'm gonna thaw it. I'll show you how to do it. I just take a colander and I throw the spinach in the colander and then I rinse it under cool water and it thaws it out and then you can wring out the extra moisture really simply. It thaws out in like a minute. It's already basically done. And then I just squeeze all the moisture out because you don't want extra moisture in your spinach artichoke dip. All right, there she blows. Throw this in here too. I'm just gonna break it up a little bit and then mix this in. I'm sure you could just throw this into like a mini crock pot or something, but I'm going to grab a baking dish. Ooh, I'm gonna grease the pan here with some avocado oil. And I'm gonna dump it in and then cook it at 350 degrees for like 20 minutes. Healthy spinach artichoke dip, never tasted so good. Here it is all cooked. Ooh, looks pretty much the same, just a little golden brown around the edges. Can't wait to dive in. I know how ironic I'm going in with a tortilla chip, but here we go. Oh my heck. 
Yes, please. Since I have most of the ingredients out, I'm gonna go ahead and throw together monster balls, monster bites, if that offends you. Uh, basically, similar ingredients, peanut butter, honey, it calls for oats, which are really great to help satiate you. Is the protein powder still here? Hold on. And this one is more of a treat because it calls for M&Ms. I always try to keep these stocked in my pantry, the mini ones. I don't know if I have mini chocolate chips, so that'll be fun to find out. But the mini M&Ms, my kids love putting these in yogurts, and then I always make these monster balls with them, the monster bites. They're so great. The kids gobble them up, they love them. It, easy to throw into their lunch boxes too. And then recently I found these mini M&Ms, peanut butter M&Ms, never saw those before. It's just so much better for me than chomping on one of these. Like grabbing one of these monster balls, rather than grabbing one of these, which I'm surprised none of my kids have gotten into yet. These have 17 grams of sugar. But you gotta have them. It's the holiday season, you know what I mean? Valentine's Day, next is Easter. I'm just trying not to go overboard. So for the Monster Bites, I'm just gonna use the same bowl because peanut butter. This is one of Elise Ellis's recipes. You guys know I love her. She is the one who created macro-friendly foods that I love and use all of the time. Uh, she shares free recipes on her Instagram. So if I ever share like her meal, oh, her meal subscription is so great. It is great. Uh, by the way, I do have a code to get 10% off if you've been eyeballing it. But if you're like, wow, I don't need another subscription service. Well, follow her on Instagram because she shares a ton of free meals there too. So two cups of oats, a little bit of salt. Give that a mix. By the way, I don't count macros. I know, I know I might be saying like, oh, this is this many grams of protein. I'm just trying to be more conscious about it, but I definitely don't count it. Not even close. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. Name that movie. So one cup of peanut butter and then half a cup of honey. I do have an energy ball recipe that I haven't made in a really long time that calls for flaxseed and chia seed and just all these really great ingredients. <laughs> I probably should make them again, but my kids love these and so I'm just sticking to it. Kinda tastes like cookie dough. Quarter cup of milk and 75 grams, ah, exactly, of protein powder. Mix this together. Here's the fun part, and you have to mix that first because the milk will make the M&Ms melt. Melt in your mouth, not in your hands, my ass. But you know what, remember that one time I left them in my car in the Florida heat during summertime and they didn't melt? <laughs> I was impressed. I threw in like a quarter cup of M&Ms, and then you're supposed to have chocolate chips in here too, but I don't have those, so that's good enough. You guessed it. Roll these into balls, and you're gonna have a sweet little treat whenever you feel like having a sweet little treat. These monster balls are always a staple in my fridge. My kids nibble on them all throughout the day. They are packed full of great things to help keep their bellies full, and that's what it's all about. And I feel a little better feeding them this rather than, you know, bag of Doritos or something. All right, that is it. I just did the dishes. I, I had the kids unload it. I loaded it, and then I had a ton more to hand wash. That's what I get for not doing dishes all day. And part of last night. It's fine. That's what happens meal prepping day. I feel like I actually didn't go through a ton of dishes while I was meal prepping, which is always like the last thing you want to do when after a day of meal prepping. But I hope I gave you some high protein recipes that you're going to try in the future. I have a ton more to try. I had more on my list, but I was like, listen, I got to watch football. You know what I mean? So I'll see you next time. If you want to subscribe, put a little happy in your day.